Hello, I'm Pastor Tommy McMurtry from Liberty Baptist Church. I want to just talk to you for a few minutes about breaking sinful habits. Now, if you have been saved and you've trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're on your way to heaven, nothing can change that. When it comes to salvation, we've already established that salvation, it is by grace through faith, and it is not of works. Works do not save you, and works are not proof that you are saved. But something that is definitely God's will for a saved person is that they start doing good works and that they start repenting of uh, some of their sinful habits that they had from their past. We see in he Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, it says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now that passage could not be any clearer that salvation is not of works. No one can brag about the fact that they are saved and that they're on their way to heaven. But now that we're saved, okay, God wants us to start doing some good things. God wants us to have a better life on this earth, and sin is going to hurt us. Even on this earth, it's going to bring us pain and misery. And so as believers, as people who have been forgiven, we should make the best effort that we possibly can to repent of those sins and start living a life that is holy to the Lord. And so it goes on in verse 10 and it says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So it is God's will for your life that you do good and that you have good works in your life. And so uh, what are these sins that we should be repenting of? You know, what are these good works that we should be doing? Because if you open up your Bible, you're going to find a lot of commandments in there. You're going to find a lot of laws, and it can be it can be very overwhelming. And it's all those commands and it's all those laws that just show us and remind us how much we need a Savior and how dependent we are on Jesus Christ. Because no one could ever repent of all their sins. None of us are ever going to be completely without sin until Jesus Christ changes our vile body into one like his glorious body. But that shouldn't stop us from making an effort and getting some victory in our life. And so um, with the last thing I want to do is create a list of do's and don'ts that are, you know, what I think are the most important because in reality, all sin is sin and all of it is important to God. And the truth is, it's not about just following a list of do's and don'ts. At the end of the day, we're all gonna, we all fall short of the glory of God. None of us can live up to any perfect standard, but there's a few basics. If we can get really these simple things down, everything else will kind of fall into place and we will be good productive Christians. So 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse one says, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Listen, you can go and you can uh, seek to learn all the commandments and try to know what these things are. You know what's right and you know what's wrong. But at the end of the day, if you don't have charity, if you don't have love in your heart, then you're not going to accomplish anything. You're not going to do any good. And there's a lot of people that know a lot of stuff, but they're still bad Christians and just not good people at all. And so we see in Matthew 22, verse 36, a question is asked, says, Master, what is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, this is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. If you will love the Lord and love your neighbor, if you'll do those two things, just two things, if you'll do those, you will just naturally keep all the other commandments. On those two hang all the law and the prophets. So how am I going to do that? You know, how do I love the Lord. You know, how do I increase in that? We see in 1 Thessalonians 3.11, it says, Now God himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you, and the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men, even as we do toward you, 
to the end he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. God wants us increasing in love towards other people. What you need to work on right now that you're saved is not just learning all the things you're supposed to do and not supposed to do. That will get overwhelming, that will get discouraging, discouraging and you will fail in any list that you come up with. But if you will increase in love, though that right there is what will help you actually be successful as a Christian, and you need to ask the Lord to help you increase in that love. We see in 1 John 5, 1, it says, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone that loveth him that begat, loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. When you love God, obeying him, it's not going to grieve you. It's not going to make you miserable. When you love your wife, when you love your kids, it does not grieve you to do good things for them. It, it makes you happy. It, it's fulfilling. When you love your wife and kids, you want to do good things for them. You don't want to hurt them. You don't have a desire to hurt them when you love them. And if we love God, if we love our brothers and sisters in Christ, we will not want to sin. We won't have that desire to sin. And so what people need today is not more education on what's right and what's wrong. They need more love for God and love for others. And you're not going to increase in your love towards God and your love towards God's people unless you are around the people of God, unless you are learning more about God. And that's why we have church. That's why in Hebrews 10, 24, it says, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. We need to be provoking others to love and good works. And church is a place where we get that. Church will help you increase in love. How are you gonna get, how are you gonna love your brothers and sisters in Christ more unless you meet them, unless you are around them and you fellowship with them, you get to know them better. And that love that you have as it, as it grows, it will just naturally cause you to do that which is right. And also, walking in the Spirit. See, walking in the Spirit will always help you do the right thing, where if you walk in the flesh, you're going to fulfill the desires of the flesh, and our flesh always desires sinful things. And in Galatians 5.19, it says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and the such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So when a person is walking in the flesh, it's manifest. It is obvious and it's seen in all these things that are mentioned right here. But then it goes on to say, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, Against such, there is no law. There are no laws in the Bible that go against anything that you will do when you are walking in the Spirit, when you are displaying the fruit of the Spirit. These things will just naturally take place and be done. And so that's what we need to work on. That's what you need to do. Now that you're saved, you need to ask the Lord to help you increase in love towards Him and towards others. And when you do that, you will naturally just do the right thing. Just like a mother who loves her child, she does not have to be told to protect her child and to take care of that child. If somebody kidnaps that child or tries to take that child from the mother, nobody has to tell that mom to go fight whoever that is and do whatever she can to stop him. They just naturally do it because they are motivated by love. And you know, as sinners, you know, we are prone to doing some pretty bad things, but if we will increase in love towards God and towards others, we will begin to naturally do things that are right, and we are not, we're not going to do things that are wicked. And so that needs to be your goal. That needs to be your prayer. Lord, help me to 
grow in love towards you and others. And I believe if you'll do that, you will be a good and productive Christian. So thank you for watching this video. I hope this was a help.